Hello everyone, and once again, welcome to Maytech. Today we're going to have a look at the Shiboko 5 Pro. I've had this machine now for a few months, and I thought I'd give you an overview of what I like about it. Just before we get into this, if you could quickly go ahead and hit that subscribe button, it really does a lot to help the channel grow. Now for reference, I had the Shiboko 3XL before this. This machine is the Shiboko 5 Pro XL and there's definitely a lot of changes between the two models. So the first thing we're going to look at is this control box. This thing is considerably larger than the control box I had for the Shiboko 3XL. It also has larger connectors, which are all front-facing, which makes them all easy to access. The control box also has extra ports for your spindle, and also an auxiliary and accessory port, which I'm not too sure what they're for, but I'll assume they're for some neat feature add-ons. There is also an on-off switch right at the bottom of the control box. The controller on my Shiboku 3 did suffer from static issues causing it to disconnect, and I'm happy to say that I've had zero issues with this control box disconnecting so far. The next new component we're going to look at is this power pendant. The lit button here gives you the ability to pause your machine, while the emergency stop button is just that and gives you the ability to quickly stop your machine. Now, let's get into the main reason I upgraded to the Shiboku 5, and that is what they're calling their heavy-duty motion system. The Shiboku 3 I had used a belt system, and the problem with these belts is they weren't particularly accurate. Although the belts were fine for doing larger woodworking projects, they just didn't have the tolerances needed for doing finer small projects. In comparison, the Shiboku 5 Pro has a system of rails and ball screws, which is not only supposed to make the CNC more accurate, but also make it more rigid for cutting heavier materials. Now, I haven't tested this machine on any metals, but I can tell you on hardwoods and on plastic composites, I am now getting consistent, accurate results on all the axes. The only noticeable drawback I've seen from the system is that it's noticeably louder than the old belt system. Another feature that comes stock with the Shiboku 5 is the bit setter. The bit setter lets you keep your zero axis after you do a bit change. Now, initially, I thought this thing was going to be a bit of a gimmick, but after having used it for a while, I'm finding it to be a huge time saver on my projects that use multiple bits. Now, another great feature of the Shiboku 5 is the size. This CNC has gotten a noticeable size upgrade from the version 3. It does come in three different sizes, the smallest being a 2x2 two two foot working area, the one I have here is a 2x4 two foot working area, and the largest being a 4x4 four four foot working area. I'm actually finding that the 2x4 foot working area is perfect for me, as my previous 3XL was getting a little small for larger woodworking projects like signs. Just to be clear, you can actually fit a 4 foot sheet in here and clamp it down, so that makes it really nice for working with sheet goods like plywood and MDFs. Another major upgrade from my previous machine is the work holding on this CNC. The 5 uses what's known as a hybrid table, with these T-slots, while on my old machine, you simply just screwed everything down to the MDF work surface. I've found this hybrid table to be a big time saver for mounting your work. There is also a huge variety in the different types of clamps and clamping systems you could use on these T-slots. For example, you can use your traditional step block clamps. You can then quickly change out to these compression style clamps which are excellent if you need to do any sort of surfacing on a project. There's also a whole variety of other clamping setups you can buy from the Carbine 3D website. I also just noticed that they started offering the 3D printable files for a lot of their clamps and other accessories on their website for free. So if you have a 3D printer, that could be an excellent option for you. Let's now move on to the next new feature, which is this LED strip that sits under the gantry. This does a great job of lighting up whatever you're working on. It actually works well enough that I can actually turn off my shop lights and just let the machine itself light up the work area. The last thing we're going to look at is dust collection. The 5 comes with this sweepy dust boot 
which seems to do a pretty decent job of getting most of the wood chips. The bottom plate of the sweepy attaches on and off using magnets, which makes it really easy for when you need to change out your bits. It also comes with this secondary plate, which doesn't have bristles on it. This allows you to see what the bit is cutting while most of the dust is still being extracted. This is handy for when you're working with small bits on detailed projects. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to leave you off with a time lapse I did of a 3D topo map on a cedar round. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And if you have any questions on this machine, please make sure to leave them in the comments below. Thanks everyone. Thank you.